Hi there and welcome to Wade's Workshop. This is episode 15 of the Quick Change Tool Post. And the final episode will be episode 16 where I show another one of the tool holders being made. But I'm going to go fast forward through all of that. Anyway, this episode is going to be all about the surface treatments that I've done on the pusher tool to prevent rust. I've done parkerizing on the block itself and heat bluing on the three pins. We'll see how it goes as far as rust prevention as, you know, as time goes on. But it looks rather nice for now anyway. So we'll take you through that process. So I just squeezed the little spindles that I made into the bearings. A uh, vise and a socket, pretty simple job. So that done. Fit the little brass spacer to keep the outer track away. And fit it to the pusher block. There we go. Get the spacer in line. No. Should we try that again? <laughs> Let's just put the spacer on there first. There we go. Try and keep it there till it's screwed in. Let's <laughs> come off again. Isn't it funny how the simplest jobs become difficult? There we go. And tighten it up with a spanner. I'm glad I put the two flats on these uh, spindles. That is the pusher tool assembled. So as you can see, it's got a fixed stop, which brings, when these come down, brings these down to centre height, so they're always centre like height of the job. So down, lock. So I know that bearing is on the centre line of the spindle. And again, One on this way round, that will push the diameter to true, that will push the diameter to true, and, and I've just realised a mistake. Both of those are fine for pushing a diameter true, but they're not fine. I didn't want one on the end, I wanted two on the face. There we go. So to show you the push tool in action, as you can see I've deliberately set this flat part, shall we call it, offset in the chuck so that it's it's throwing as you can see. I've just nipped it in there so it's not dead tight and I can bring my tool gradually forward and as you can see it's slowly slowly coming in and there we are the bearings rotating with the part so it's not damaging the part and it's pushed it into dead true I'll show you a similar thing for pushing in a part, a long part. Now as you can see, this part is really throwing. So let's wind in the push tool.
a bit rough on the outside but as you can see the bearings continuously spinning now I'll just wind away and we'll put a clock on that and show you how good it is well there you go within about four tenths on the clock and it is a rough bit of aluminium it's not been machined on the outside but the push tools push it into true to within about four tenths happy days so I'm trying a bit of heat bluing on the three pins I've tried the first one had some success I think it was more heat purpling uh, it's all in the timing I've got a tin on basically a camping stove in the shed here it's full of brass chippings to try and even out the temperature so that it's not uh, so, you know so that it's spread around a bit more so what I'm doing is just leaving it there and waiting now what happens is the shiny surface of the pins goes like a pale straw color first and gradually darkens to a dark straw then it moves through a sort of yeah bluey purpley stage and you do see various regions of perfectly blue finish my previous one it's difficult to tell sort of without natural light but came out a sort of purpley blue but yeah we'll try with these see how we get on I'll just leave it run we're getting very close now the one on the right is just fading from purple into blue the one on the left is just going from dark straw into a purple color so I've realized that blue is the last color it's after purple I was getting a bluey purple with the last one I was worried about it uh, losing the blue altogether so I pulled it very nearly there now I can still see purple tinges but it's bluing more and more the longer I leave it I think the secret is the bed of brass chippings and that's what gives it the even temperature so that you get a consistent color throughout the component the purple is slowly disappearing from this one now and this one is becoming more purple it's probably a little bit further away from the heat or on a bit more brass bluer and bluer and bluer it's still bits of purple I can see so what I'm going to do is when I get to the point where it's as blue as I think it's going to get I'm going to pull it out and drop it in a pot of oil still a little bit purple you know when you worry about overcooking something I don't know what it goes after blue I think it just goes black or it does actually go back to silver again if you go too far I've used bluing and sort of pale straw for heat treating uh, scribers and you know odd punches and things like that I've had to do but I never tried to do a complete component to a colour it's not for the heat treatment version of it it's purely for the aesthetics and the fact that it will offer some rust resistance I'm gonna pull that out I'm sure it's going so let's have a little go at surface treating the block for the pusher tool so first thing I've done is I've washed the whole block down very liquid hot water run it under really hot tap so that the part gets hot and it's dried off all the water fairly quickly I'm gonna spray it with some brake and clutch cleaner uh, so it's not oil based as a, a degreasing agent I thoroughly cleaned out all the holes and as you can see that's dripping in brake and clutch cleaner and I'll let that evaporate away so that part is now thoroughly degreased as it were now I've made up my mixture with a magic fluid 50 ml magic fluid and 200 ml water so it's 4 to 1 ratio in fact I want to fully submerge the block and I don't think that's going to be quite deep enough maybe stick something under one end to make a, a deep end as it were let's have a look something a bit thicker than that I don't know that's better we've got a deep end now we should be able to fully submerge now never tried this before we'll see that's not quite fully submerged in there I think I need to just get a bit keener with the well I can see it's colouring already 
So that is now submerged in there. We'll just uh, agitate it a bit. It's doing something. I'm told three, five minutes, something like that. Well, seven minutes have passed on my little workshop clock. And I think it's time to take it out. And as you can see, we've got a black block. Now, I'm told you need to then rinse it in water to stop the chemical reaction. So I've got another pot of water here. This is just clean water. Just rinse it off. Well, it's certainly black. As you can see, it's a black block. Um, yeah, it's black. All right, a piece of paper towel here. The screw I was holding it with was a stainless steel screw. I don't know whether that's right or wrong or what have you, but I put a stainless steel screw in it because I knew it wouldn't blacken. And strangely enough, it didn't blacken. Well, fairly uniform finish on there. Uh, I don't want to drop this into the bottom of the glass jar. Oh, <laughs> Julie, I dropped it into the bottom of the glass jar. Can you imagine a lot of crack and about oil everywhere? I got a glass jar full of engine oil. I, I just dropped it in. Can you imagine if it had cracked the bottom off? I would have had a bit of a mess. Anyway, I'm going to leave that for a bit now, soaking in that oil. And then we'll clean it off and we'll come back and have another look. A parcel has arrived. I think I know what this might be. It is, it is, it is. We have oh, a well padded chunk of EN8. So a quick swim. 40 by 25 by let's have a look tape measure. 500 mil long. I reckon I'll get about eight tool holders of that. 60 mil, 60 yeah, 60, 120, 180, so let's say I get three per 200 mil, that'll be six, leaves me 100 mil, I'll get seven out of there, I think that's a, more than enough to be going on with. Well here's the result of it, it's definitely black, now the process I believe is called parkerizing, um, you mix up the chemical, you make sure it's fully degreased, you dunk it in the chemical, leave it 5-10 minutes, rinse it off with water, dunk it in oil, and it's supposed to give a degree of rust protection. So what was a reasonably shiny block of EN8 that used to rust whenever I left it in the shed if I didn't have any oil on it, very quickly. We'll see, time will tell. I'm not going to sort of put any oil or anything on it other than what gets on it during use and we'll see how it lasts as far as not rusting in the future so that's parkerizing on that as I showed you earlier on I did uh, heat bluing oh, you can actually see the blue I would call it heat purpling <laughs> that I've done on the fixed stop and again on the bearing spindles they were heat blued you can't just make out the blueness but it, it's a purpley blue I think either I didn't leave it long enough or left it too long but it's fairly uniform throughout the part so putting it on that bed of brass chippings seems to have uh, done the job on evening out the temperature as it was applied on basically what was a camping stove as you saw so final little job on this is going to be to assemble the push tool and that's the push tool complete ready for me to move on to making more blocks now that I have the material 
for the rest of the tool holders. I'll be so happy if I can just make one, just for the turning tool alone, you know, just for the, the left hand tool. I'll be so happy to be able to use the new quick change tool post on a more regular basis. But the materials here, I'll start cutting it up. I won't show you the machining of the dovetails because you've seen me do that on this block. I've now got a block which I'm happy with the size and fit so I can use the two pins to measure this one and then just make all the others the same size across the two pins, same as you saw me do with the uh, when I machined the, the actual tool post. You saw me use the two pins to get a measurement. I can put two pins in here, get a measurement and just make them all as I machine them with the two pins the same. So I won't bother showing you the... Uh, the dovetail cutting on the on the future tool holders but we will go into like the screw holes and the different designs i'm going to come up with to make them as good as i can make them okay happy days i'll put this together so there it is the completed push tool on the quick change tool post actually from this angle you can see the uh heat purpling should we call it uh, there is a bluey tinge to it so we've got a parkerized block and heat blued pins two pins for the bearing and the fixed depth stop is heat blued they've all been treated with oil let's just see as time goes on over the next couple of months what degree of rust proofing that's given the parts and it has got quite a nice look to it with the black finish that i quite like the parkerizing i might uh, use that a lot more in the future and it's simple to do okay just to go on that it's this stuff Black oxide solution, nickel free, um, used as a submersion product, blah de, blah de, blah, all that on there. Made in the UK, and it's a parkerizing fluid. It's a one litre, is about, I don't know, 25 quid, something like that. But that'll go a hell of a long way. I only use 50 mil for that tank, which made up a quarter litre. And literally, this, this one litre bottle would make five litres of fluid. So, you know, it's fairly economical when you think you don't need much for small components. Anyway, so that's a little bit of heat treatment and rust prevention, shall we call it. We'll see how we get on.